Lloyd, Kai, Cole, Jay, Nia, and Zane might just be normal teenagers by day, but by night, they are all powerful elemental ninjas destined to save Ninjago City. Come join us as we follow our favorite plastic ninja during their first transition to the big screen. Hi, I'm Joe with Channel Frederator, and we are here to tell you all you need to know before you Ninjago. So jump up, kick back, whip around, and spin as we tell you 107 facts about the Lego Ninjago movie. Ninja, go! <laughs> The Lego Ninjago Movie is a 3D computer-animated martial arts film that was produced by Warner Animation Group. It was directed by Charlie Bean, Paul Fisher, and Bob Logan. Although The Lego Ninjago Movie is Charlie Bean's first directing debut, he's no stranger to the Lego franchise. He did voice work for additional characters in the Lego Batman movie. And like Charlie Bean, the writers are no strangers to the animated franchise either. Both Dan and Kevin Hageman have also written for the Ninjago Masters of Spinjitzu series and The Lego Movie. Bean also previously worked as a story board artist for popular shows such as Dexter's Laboratory, Powerpuff Girls, and Samurai Jack. He also directed the critically acclaimed Disney XD series, Tron Uprising. They say it takes a village to raise a child, and it seems like it took a village to write this movie. This is because the Lego Ninjago movie has a whopping six screenwriters and four additional writers that helped with the story. The producers behind the Lego movie, Dan Lin, Roy Lee, Phil Lord, and Chris Miller, returned to produce the Lego Ninjago movie, all aboard the Lego train. The film is a spin-off of the popular Cartoon Network show of the same name, which is an original Lego property. Introduced in late 2010, Ninjago was a theme based on the Ninja series which launched in 19. But was discontinued due to lackluster sales. Lego reintroduced ninjas in 2011 with the Lego Ninjago television show. The series borrowed from the previous Ninja Lego sets, but modernized its narrative with vehicles and technology. Lego Ninjago was originally planned to be discontinued in 2013 and replaced with the Legends of Chima line, but the plan was scrapped after the huge success of the TV show. And just for a bit of background, Lego Ninjago was the third ever Lego TV series following the shows Little Robots and Edward and Friends. In other words, it was the little Lego series that could. In September 2013, Warner Brothers announced that they would be developing a third installment of the Lego universe with the Lego Ninjago movie based off the Ninjago toy line. The movie was actually announced before the Lego movie even came out. Well, patience is a virtue. The movie was the first Cartoon Network show to have a feature film adaptation since the Powerpuff Girls movie in 2002. The Master, a short film, was featured in front of screenings of the movie Storks to promote the film. Storks also took the original original release date of the Lego Ninjago movie, but really, no hard feelings. The short was about Sensei Wu and his struggles to combat a super annoying chicken. A very relatable experience for all of us. Or maybe that's just me. The Lego Ninjago movie was teased in a DVD extra off of the Lego Movie Special Edition with a short called Enter the Ninjago. The short focused on the president of Hollywood explaining to Emmett Burkowski how they were going to adapt his life story into a movie. However, the president keeps inserting ninjas into different plot points from the Lego movie. As the old man would say, kids love ninjas. The ninja in this short is none other than our own green ninja, Lloyd Garmadon. More on him later. So why Ninjago? Of all the original properties, it's the top performing one. Michael McNally, senior director of brand relations for the LEGO Group, defended the theme as the most compelling and true to that of the LEGO brand. According to LEGO Batman director Adam McKay, the Ninjago film was an important step in establishing the connected universe, stating that the LEGO cinematic universe derives from a sci-fi premise in regards to the world that the movies take place in for the majority of the running time, and the other world that's out there. The film uses the same characters introduced in the Lego Ninjago show. However, the Ninjago movie is not a riff off the series, or a sequel to the Lego movie, or the Lego Batman movie. Rather, it's a standalone film. This is the fourth animated project to come out of the Warner Brothers Animation Group. The previous three films are the Lego movie, Storks, and the Lego Batman movie. But just because it's another Lego movie, doesn't mean that the film lacks a distinct style. Producer Dan Lin described the Lego movie as an action-adventure movie, the Lego Batman movie as a superhero movie, and the Lego Ninjago movie as a martial arts movie. The Hollywood Trinity. Cue the angelic singing. In fact, the Lego team uses each additional film in the Lego movie franchise to experiment with different genres of movies. Um, Lego romantic comedy, anyone? The film is set in the city of Ninjago, a world inspired by East Asian mythology and culture. Some would even say that the world is based on a modernized feudal Japan. So. 
How does Ninjago capture the essence of martial arts? By making real-life action into animation. With the help of Jackie Chan and his stunt team, all the fights in Ninjago are 100% authenticated and rendered from live footage. A challenge that Jackie Chan had while choreographing the fights were the limitations of the LEGO figures themselves. Real people can bend their arms and legs all willy-nilly, but LEGO people don't have joints. In other words, Jackie Chan had to choose movements based around stiff arms and legs. Chan's favorite fight to choreograph was his character's fight against Justin Thoreau's Garmadon, because it was the most emotional and true to his martial arts standards. While the Ninjago movie does use CGI animated bricks to capture that stop-motion look, it differs from previous LEGO movies with its environments. Rather than simply keep the LEGOs in a contained LEGO space, elements of nature are animated throughout the film. The reason all these elements are so natural is because LEGO Ninjago actually takes place in someone's backyard, hence those non-LEGO props. This leaves the characters in a setting of mass potential. In fact, producer Dan Lin revealed that real water, trees, and grass would be placed within Ninjago World. Think Craggle, but next level. One might see this backyard location tying into the plot with the introduction of Meowthra, a giant house cat that terrorizes Ninjago City. Maybe after I see the movie, I can figure out how to get my own cat to stop terrorizing me. Of course, this means that the film features a different style of animation than seen on the TV show, opting to instead match the faux stop-motion style of the past two LEGO movies. Mark Mothersbaugh, who composed the score for the LEGO movie in 2014, also scores the Lego Ninjago movie. Mother's Ball has worked with Lord and Miller on three other films before, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, 21 Jump Street, and 22 Jump Street. Mother's Ball has scored a number of acclaimed films, including Happy Gilmore and four Wes Anderson films. Someone give this man a Grammy, or at least Lego him one. Although the film features some super awesome butt-kicking action and stunning animation, that's not what the movie is really about. At its core, the Lego Ninjago movie is a film about family. The plot centers around the green ninja, Lloyd Garmadon, and his complicated relationship with his supervillain father, Lord Garmadon. You might recall that the original Lego movie had a similar theme. This is because the creators of the Ninjago movie wanted to maintain the idea of Legos as timeless relics passed from parent to child. In this world, everybody knows that Lloyd is the son of Lord Garmadon, causing him to be an outcast at school. But little do they know that Lloyd is saving them all with his ninja secret identity. Despite Lloyd being the main character, he made several cameos in the Lego movie. Now, it's his turn to be in the spotlight. Dave Franco plays Lloyd Garmadon, the green ninja. This isn't Dave Franco's first time voicing a Lego, as he provided the voice to the character of Wally in the original Lego movie. Kumail Nanjiani also provides a voice for the film playing the blue ninja, Jay. While Kumail may not have voiced a Lego figure before, he has played an ancient wishmaster on a hit animated show known known as Adventure Time. Hey, we've heard of that show. The voice cast includes Michael Pena, Zach Woods, Fred Armisen, Jackie Chan, Abby Jacobson, Justin Thoreau, and Olivia Munn. The actors spent over a year recording dialogue for the film, as the directors and producers searched for the perfect voices to bring the characters to life. That's a good hunk of time devoted to getting it right. Jackie Chan plays the wise master Wu, but I bet you knew that. What you didn't know is that Jackie Chan has his own cameo outside of the Lego sphere. Abby Jacobson, the voice actress for the character of Nia, also voiced the chicken in the original Ninjago short. She's also the co-creator and star of the hit show, Broad City. Abby Jacobson even recorded some alternate dialogue the same day as the Comic-Con panel. It's not procrastinating, it's improvising. That colorful Ninjago movie cast had a day where they recorded their lines together in one space. As a result, much of the dialogue consisted of amazing ad-libs and all-around great energy, but the cast also had trouble keeping it PG. According to Olivia Munn, many words like the F word, the P word, the B word, and the W word were used in the recording studio, not to call anyone out. Zach Woods and Kumail Nanjiani. It makes sense, since Nanjiani also worked with Zach Woods from their time on HBO's improvised show, Silicon Valley. Zach Woods' only memories of Lego was when he played with Playmobiles as a child. Poor guy. In contrast, Dave Franco and Justin Thoreau recorded many of their scenes together to help cultivate their character's father-son relationship. Dave Franco says the humor from the Lego Ninjago movie is very specific, but it can make a 30-year-old laugh as much as a five-year-old. Speaking of old men laughing, even though Lloyd's dad is the worst guy ever, he still yearns to build a relationship with his son. Justin Thoreau's voice of Garmadon was inspired by Will Arnett, as Thoreau said himself, I'm trying to fill the big throat of Will Arnett. Uh, are we still doing phrasing? On top of that, Thoreau also improvised the LaLloyd line that was seen in the first trailer. I mean, if that doesn't sell ya, I don't know what will. The cast members were all given Lego versions of their characters during the 2017 Comic-Con panel. Unfortunately for them, they all had all of their figures taken 
taken away after the panel was completed. But that didn't stop Michael Pena, who stole his to give to his Lego fanatic son. The cast thinks Olivia Munn would be the best ninja. This is because she has a black belt in karate. In the TV show, Lloyd actually started as a wannabe supervillain and didn't see his father in such a negative light. This story device was scrapped and Lloyd's preconceived notions about his father were changed to fit the film's needs. Lloyd Garmadon's name is a pun on Lord Garmadon, which was a name inspired by the word Armageddon. Lord Garmadon is a villain with one fiery temper. He often flaunts it by dropping unsatisfactory generals into a volcano. Lord Garmadon is also Master Wu's brother, making Lloyd Master Wu's nephew. Looks like Jackie Chan is the uncle this time around. For villains, the filmmakers decided on an aquatic-themed parasites over the classic Ninjago bad guys. This was to further distinguish the movie from its extensive television series. Lloyd isn't the only ninja ninja in training in Ninjago City. He is joined by his friends and fellow ninjas, Kai, Cole, Jay, Nia, and Zane, as they all train in the art of spin jitsu under Master Wu. As fans might recall, each ninja hero has their own elemental power. Kai has the power of fire, Cole has the power of earth, Jay the power of lightning, Nia has the power of water, Zane the power of ice, and Lloyd has the power of energy. The meaning behind the name Kai is sea, which is ironic because it is stated in the TV show that Kai is afraid of large bodies of water. Zane is an android, a ninja android. Because of this, he has trouble understanding sarcasm and and pop culture references. I don't think he would really understand anything that I would say to him. When Zane is in his mech, he becomes physically connected to it, which makes sense because, well, he's a robot after all. Cole is a ninja of many interests. His hobbies include rock climbing, drawing, dancing, and cooking. Cooking is his favorite hobby, but unfortunately for him, he is a terrible chef. Nia is one cool cat that drives a motorcycle through the halls of her school. That has to be against, like, every rule, right? Nia is also allergic to perfume, but that definitely doesn't ruin her mad style. Jay has a huge crush on Nia, but every time he tries to tell her, he gets interrupted. That happens to me sometimes when I say a fact and I get into besides being a ninja. Jay is also an inventor and has invented enough gizmos to fill an entire warehouse. Kai and Nia are siblings. To raise two wicked awesome ninja, they must have had some seriously cool parents. On that note, Cole's mech is pimped out with turntables and other musical gadgets to create intense musical waves that knock the villains off their feet. Ooh, 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 someone should request an everything is awesome remix from him. Unfortunately, Master Wu thinks all of the ninjas have become too reliant on their mechs and have to better learn how to work together. There's also a twist to this tale. All of the ninjas are also master builders, just like Emmett from the Lego movie. Unlike the TV show, the Ninjago movie is more self-aware. It plays off the conscious tone of the Lego movie and the Lego Batman movie, in which every character knows they're in a Lego world. The Lego Ninjago movie is produced by the Warner Brothers Animation Group, meaning there is a whole lot of Warner Brothers characters hidden throughout the film. On top of that, there are plenty of Lego Easter eggs in the film for all of those brickheads out there. The minifigures of the babysitter, the bride, and the hot dog man can all be found in the first trailer of the film. Minifigures that were featured in the Lego movie, such as Kebab Bob, the zookeeper, and the artist, will all be making return appearances in the Lego Ninjago movie. There are some non-Lego cameos to be found as well, with Ferris Bueller making a guest appearance. Meowthra is a callback to the famous Godzilla villain, Mothra. The relationship between Lloyd and and Lord Garmadon is an allusion to Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader's relationship in Star Wars. Further evidence of this is a scene in the movie where Lloyd gets his arm ripped off, a possible reference to Luke getting his hand cut off. Master Wu's favorite beverage in the movie is tea. It makes sense because, in the television series, he owns his very own tea shop. Lloyd's poster in his room is actually a shout-out to the Bruce Lee classic film Enter the Dragon. Dave Franco cried during the making of the Lego Ninjago movie. It was during a hard father-son scene that Dave broke down into tears. Then he realized that he was playing a green ninja Lego piece and needed to reel it in a little bit. In Japan, the movie features an exclusive theme song performed by the band Johnny's West, Moo 1%, or another 1%. A minifigure in Ninjago City has a Galador shirt, which is the source of what is widely believed to be the worst Lego theme of all time. In the trailer, the minifigure series Cole wears a shirt which in Ninja Go East reveals that it's for ACDC. In terms of the characters, all of the ninja now have unique hair pieces. The main four characters' hair are all drawn from the generic ones they had used before, and Nia has an entirely new hairstyle, being a messy ponytail instead of a neat bob. 
Zane's sweater features the alien clingers slash plubian brain beasts from the Alien Conquest theme. Rather than feature the bone as it does in the series, Garmadon's new helmet looks much more like an evil Kabuto. The result looks similar to the Helmet of Shadows from the series. The Helmet of Shadows itself is actually on a training dummy in the toy line. Though she's not Samurai X this time around, Nia still retains a samurai influence in her gear. Like an armored skirt, the Connecticut Science Center celebrated Martial Arts Day with a Ninjago celebration that had discounted admission sales. This event involved the exploration of physical skill, discipline, and sport of martial arts. The Lego Ninjago movie was released on September 22, 2017, a full year after its original release date, September 23, 2016. Still no hard feelings. The film was released by Warner Brothers in 3D, 2D, and IMAX 3D thanks to Warner Brothers' partnership with IMAX, so the audience could bask in that reflective Lego shine. A video game adaptation of the Lego Ninjago movie by TT Fusion was also released on September 22, 2017 for Windows PC, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. It was the first Lego video game to be released on the same day as its film counterpart. The video game has the same features as previous Lego games, but added new techniques and multiplayer capabilities. Being that this is a Lego film, a ton of Lego sets have been released alongside the movie. The sets include the Lego Ninjago movie locations, vehicles, and giant robots, which are 99.9% .9 accurate to the actual film models. The largest Lego set is the Ninjago City, and that comes with a whopping 4,867 pieces and sells for $299.99. That's a lot of pieces to not lose. Though that might seem like a lot of pieces, it actually falls pretty short of the largest Lego set of all time, which is the Lego Taj Mahal, a set made up of 5,922 pieces. And this just in, the new Millennium Falcon set is the Lego set with the most pieces. Legoland has an entire Lego Ninjago world with all sorts of Ninjago-themed rides and attractions. In this section of the theme park, they have a Ninjago 4D ride where riders can do hand gestures, such as karate chops, to affect the ride. In preparation for the film's release, Warner Brothers made a teaser titled Back to School. It's based on the character Nia giving advice on how students can get back to their studies in a radical ninja fashion. Her tips include having a secret identity, eating sushi, and keeping makeup in your locker to use just in case of an emergency stealth mission. In Nia's locker, she likes to have pictures of people who inspire her. The people in her locker include Wildstyle, Lego Batgirl, Princess Unikitty, and Lego Wonder Woman. The writer of this piece swallowed a Lego due to her extreme passion for the Lego movies. Her corpse will be present opening night for the Lego Ninjago movie, and she'll be Legified. Once again, I'm Joe, and thanks for watching 107 Facts About the Lego Ninjago Movie. Which is your favorite Lego movie? Do you have any of the sets? Comment below and let us know. Don't forget to click the bell icon to become part of the notification squad. We have videos dropping every day, so make sure to subscribe to Channel Frederator, your Cartoon Central on the internet.